Okay, so I had a um, couple comments and questions about um, doing uh, multiple tool, uh, multi-tool tool paths for a project in CarveCo. So I just want to show you uh, briefly how I do it. Uh, there could be a better way or a different way. I'm not sure because I'm still fairly new to this, but I'm going to show you what works for me. So on this project here, this is just one, uh, just for an example, I'm not really going to carve this, but I'll just show you uh, how I've been doing things here. So I have a project here. It's 12 inches wide, 6 inches high, and I have this tank that I got from the CarbCo Relief Art Clip Art Library or Relief Clip Art Library. So we have this here, and I just double-click that and resized it onto the screen here. So I'm all set for this to be permanently pasted to the project. So if I just highlight it and press the T key, you'll see this little uh, box come up around it with an arrow that you can just kind of raise and lower for you know how deep you want the relief to be. So we'll just go ahead and leave that like it is there. And we'll go back to the square on top down view. And then we'll just hit paste. And we'll just do one more thing here. We're going to create a uh, rectangle around this uh, as if this is an entire plaque and not just the tank that we're carving. So we have uh, we have that box around it and we'll go ahead and click create. So that gives us a big square vector around the tank. So now we go to project and we come up here to tool paths, make sure that's highlighted. And then we come down here to 3D tool paths. So you go ahead and click on that. Oh, that box didn't show up, there we go. So for uh, this here, we're gonna use, or I'm gonna use, or um, two tools. I'll be using a, uh, a roughing bit, rough in bit, and a finishing bit. The finishing bit, we'll go ahead and select that a while and through the tool groups here. And we'll just say that's going to be an eighth inch ball nose just for this project. Or actually we can maybe select the 16th just to give it a little bit finer detail. And this here for this tool clearance strategy, I'll just leave that as is raster and the angle and allowances and tolerances. I'll just leave that go for uh, these purposes, but you can change these if you want to just what pattern you want the tool to go in. I don't really mess with that too much. Multiple Z passes, I don't really uh, mess with that either. So I usually leave that alone. Uh, see, so then the roughing options, we'll just say we're going to use a quarter inch. Uh, ball nose just for the sake of, of this example and again you can change the tool clearance strategy angle profile pass that just means that uh, you know the tool will come around the outside edges of this 3d piece here in the project um, and you can have it do that before it does the roughing or during or after so it'll just make uh, you know like one continuous pass around the tank. So, and again, tolerance and allowances, I don't usually don't mess with that. Z slices, I usually leave on automatic. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, you know, uh, what effect that would have if I would change it, but I'm just gonna leave that like it is for now. And lead in moves and ramping, I usually don't, I usually don't mess with that. I usually leave that go. So save Z. That's going to be uh, at three quarters. We'll go ahead and change that. I'm going to make this uh, at one inch because I'm going to make the overall thickness of the project three quarters of an inch. So change the material thickness set up to 0.75. And material in model position and material. So you can slide this if you want. Um, the bottom of the material to be like the thickness of your plaque and have the tank sticking out above this. So this uh, dark gray part here is where your tank would be. And then this would be 0.3 inches thickness of 
the plaque of the base material. And uh, so we'll just go ahead and leave that go. But you can slide it and change it. it just depends on how thick you want the base to be for uh, and where you want the, the model positioned in the thickness of the material. So if you would decrease this, then obviously your roughing bit is going to have more work to do by clearing all this thickness at the top. So if you can split the difference or um, and we'll just split the difference and just say like an eighth inch, 0.125. So I'll leave the rest at the bottom. Now your material Z0. I found that when you're doing a 3D carving, it's best to leave that on the bottom because once you, um, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here once just so I can kind of show you um, what I'm talking about. I'll close this. So uh, let me turn this sideways so you can kind of see, and I'll scroll in here. Yeah, so you can kind of see this little area, these two lines here, that would be your 0.3 thickness of the plaque that would be flat and stay in the, uh, you know, as your base material. And this little part right here, this is all going to be cut away. So if you have your Z um, material set at the top, once you carve this out, in the rough pass, you're not going to have anywhere, and you change your bit, you're not going to have anywhere to to set your probe in order to uh, set your Z height again when you do your finish pass. So if you set it at your Z at the bottom of the material, then once you do your rough pass and you put your finishing bit in, you can just put your Z probe right on your spoil board and Z your new uh, get your new Z height off of that to do your finish pass. Unless you have any collars or anything on your bits that, um, or your machine has any um, special ways of uh, remembering the Z position. But uh, as far as the Prover XL 4030, um, it doesn't have any advanced features like that. So that's why I just use the um, the uh, bottom as a Z material zero. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to this. Oops, I got to finish. I didn't save that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this again real quick. Choose the bits. So we do have the uh, material thickness set. So just go ahead and hit calculate now. And you can see it simulated the cut, so but you can't really see much at that moment there. So if you just come over here, hit these little light bulbs, toggle 3D visibility, and it'll bring your your tank back into view. And you can also use a slider here, the contrast slider. Sometimes that will give you a little bit better view of what the project should look like. Uh, it just depends on your screen and how uh, you know brightness and whatnot that um, as far as how you can see the project that you're working on so again you can just slide this up and down so we have that now as far as saving the tool pass now we have two tool pass here for the again for the roughing and the finishing and I think we'll add one here just to uh, for a profile so we're going to go ahead and click that just uh, so I can give you an example here of having three tool paths. And we'll go down here to tool path, profile tool path. Um, up here, so on the profile, you can hit selected vector, which would basically do this whole thing. So we're going to go ahead and do that. But since I made this box the same dimensions as the plaque or as the project workspace we'll go ahead and just hit that on the inside and we don't need to change any of this here the start depth is zero finish depth is 0.75 profiling tool we'll just do an eighth inch end mill 
and again some some all these different settings uh, as far as how you want the bit to move and around the project and we'll leave everything else the same actually the material is easier or safe z will change that to one since it is a three quarter inch thick board we'll just uh, make that one and we'll hit calculate so and then you can see how many passes it's going to take about looks like four passes there and again you can change a step over and step down to reduce times or uh, speed it up and uh, but for this uh, video I don't think we need to mess with the step over and step down so I'll go ahead and clear that out and go back to the top view okay so we have three tool paths here the, the finishing the roughing and the profile to cut it out now you, to save your tool pass you'll come down here to the little disk icon and just select that and I think by default it's only going to have one tool path to save over here so you have to either move these over by highlighting and then move to select the tool path into the output list you can just do it that way or if you go back here instead of doing that you can always come over here to your save options save tool paths to separate files no, actually no, I did that wrong sorry since I only had profile highlighted that's the only reason that's the reason why it only had one in the save but if you highlight tool paths it will save it will bring all of them over into that column as you can see here so now all of them are in there because if you just have one highlighted over here on the right then only one's going to be here you have to move them over manually so in order to save all the tool paths to separate files click this box and append tool path details the file names that just means that it's going to give you the name it's going to give you the description of the machine relief and the tool that you're using and uh, what type of uh, if it's a roughing or finishing or profile so um, go ahead and we'll save this you can change this full directory as far as where it's going to save you could put the name now this here the machine file format is very important um, I've found that for CarveCo and the Prober Excel 4030 um, there's no specific G code for the Prover Excel in here um, I think there is some Sane Smart or Genmitsu let me scroll down here uh, or let's see nope I guess not I thought there was but there's all different ones. G Tech. Um, what I find works best for me is the easel inch. It, or depending on whether or not you're using millimeters on your uh, project or inches as far as your unit of measure. So I just save it as an easel inch file dot nc. So that usually works. Um, you can uh, you can try any one of these here I think dot NC usually works the best uh, G code inch and tap I've had problems with here G tech is another one that I've used at dot NC that that's worked also but like you said there's no machine specific G code for the Prover XL in here so um, you know you're just gonna have to play with the different uh, types of file uh, G code file types just to see what would work best so oh, there is saying smart there so you could try one of these um, that's for the 3018 so I don't know how I've never tried those so I don't know how they would work with a prover uh, with a prover Excel so again just use the easel inch and then you hit save so then basically what you would do then after you have those saved go ahead and hit cancel and just minimize and now you can see here I have these three tool paths saved 
So then you could, uh, then now what you need to do is you need to load these one by one into the candle software. Oops. Resize that so it fits in here to my screen size. So again, you just uh, open up the candle, open, and then again, like uh, you'll see here, where it'll show tank tool path one, machine relief, ball nose, quarter inch roughing. And you can save the different file names. You can change the file names, but I just find that that works best for me. So I'll just go ahead and hit that. And you can kind of see it gives you the pre preview of the project and where the tool is going to go. So I don't have at the moment, I don't have my machine connected. Um, to candle because I just reset my computer system up so I haven't got to that point where I uh, have it set up but you would just go into service and settings and then select the, the proper com port I think the mine might be three. Oh, there we go it is connected so if I were if I had a piece of wood on the project or on the machine and I was ready to go so then I would just uh, use the probes and set my X, Y, and Z uh, and go from there. So you would just go in again. Once it does the rough pass, you would go ahead and then just open up again your um, finishing pass and run the machine again. And then if you were going to cut it out and doing a profile pass, you just come back through once again and hit the, you know, and just load each one individually. I'm not sure um, how you can do multiple tool paths in Candle. I think the only way you can do it is if you are using the same bit for each pass. So if I were doing this whole project with one particular bit, then I think you could do multiple tool paths in candle but it has to be the same bit in each one otherwise um, I don't think it'll work but you know I'm still fairly new at this so I don't know all the ins and outs of uh, carve co yet and the candle software so um, but this is what works for me I've uh, you know and the problems I've had are usually errors that I've made so um, I hope this uh, video helps explain it a little bit. Sorry if, uh, you know, if I confused anyone or if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know. And um, I'll try to do my best to um, answer your questions. And uh, if you have any further questions on that, um, and just give you some input from my experiences on what I've been uh, doing that works for me. So again, please let me know if you have any questions or comments. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And um, I will uh, post some more videos as I keep doing more projects and learn more features. So that way I can just kind of share everything, share everything with you. So thanks for watching.